can you take us through the passive optical network setup that you have on display here? Sure thing, Patrick. We have ourselves here a 10 gig XGS Pond demonstration, but it's happening over a same system that also has a G Pond running on it. So one is at 10 gigs, one is at 2.5 gigs. We have an OLT that would be sitting in a data center that used to house the old G Pond, now has 10 gigs running on it. It's coming across the same optical distribution plant multiple wavelengths across the same optical distribution plant, across the same splitter, and then to two different types of LNT, one being the legacy uh, ITU-984 GPON, and then these ONTs here also, the ITU-989 GPON uh, ONTs. John, can you tell us how this setup differs from the passive optical network that serves, say, an FTTH uh, application? Yes, so in this situation, we are working inside a commercial enterprise, inside a building across the campus. So we need to support advanced IP Ethernet protocols like uh, 802.1x and network access control. Right. And also there's the PoE side. We got to support the 802. Uh, 3AT and 802.3AB, no BT, for the future 60 watt and 100 watt solutions. Concerning 10 gig, can you talk about the, the provision of 10 gig uh, in the enterprise, how it's done and then the extent to which it's needed? And, and that's interesting because we're finding that our customers don't need 10 gig everywhere. They're going to need it very strategically at, at places within the network, let's say at a Wi-Fi, a WAP, or an IP camera. In this situation, you can install a PON card, pick the SFP, whether you want a 10 gig or a older GPON SFP, then you can set an ONT right next to that high bandwidth device that needs either a 10 gig or a 5 gig or a 2.5 right. and have SFP plus and just plug those right in the ONT to get exactly the bandwidth you need to your end device. Excellent, John, thank you. Kevin, on the topic of power in a passive optical network, traditionally local power is the way uh, that it goes. Can you tell me about uh, remote power, sort of what it is, why it might be implemented? Sure, Patrick. With remote power, what we're doing is distributing power from a centralized location. So we take normal 48 volt DC power that's uh, located like in an IDF, uh, maybe co-located with the OLT, right. the, uh, like a Telabs uh, piece of gear, and then uh, over copper cable, we transport uh, voltage that powers the ONTs that can be a few hundred feet away. Got it. Okay, so the way it works is that you have uh, the centralized power um, with the opportunity to put battery backup so that you have one location to do batteries. And in doing so, that allows you to provide uh, battery backup for the entire enterprise. I see. The other thing is that you don't have AC outlets at each of the locations, right. which, which gives you the ability to avoid accidental uh, interruption by people mistakenly unplugging the, uh, the uh, power. Right, right, excellent, thank you. Jimmy, in a passive optical network, we've got multiple wavelengths coming down a single fiber. Can you tell me, from Expo's standpoint, uh, how is each of those wavelengths evaluated? Well, that's a good question because now technicians will be dealing with multiple wavelengths, so uh, a standard power meter is not good anymore. So what we need uh, is a, a next-gen, uh, from next-gen pond, we need a, a filtered power meter that will be able to see and discriminate each wavelength coming down. And, and the good thing with the new generation of uh, pond power meter is that they can actually measure both XGS pond, next-gen pond 2, and even G pond. So it will right. adapt and apply the right settings for the technicians. It will right. give you a clear pass-fail for each technology. Excellent, thank you. And concerning throughput, uh, how can you how can you verify that there's really a gig going going uh, where it needs to go? If you pay for a one gig uh, service, you expect to have a one gig uh, throughput. Um, uh, what people don't know is that really often when they try to do a speed test, they are limited by the capacity of the components on the network, uh, or even the computer or the smartphone that you're doing the test with. So we have uh, developed a true. Uh, one gig uh, throughput tester to really prove and certify to the end users that you're getting a one gig at the house. Perfect, thank you. Thank you.